Coming up next on Rugby Wrap Up, a star studded Major League Rugby preview. Rugby Wrap Up brought to you in part by The Pig and Whistle, the world's best rugby pub, and Lean and Limber. Stretch your way to a healthier lifestyle. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to Rugby Wrap-Up in Midtown Manhattan talking rugby, and we are talking Major League Rugby today. And, Steve Lewis, i got to say, you look a lot different since you've been coaching the Jamaica Sevens team. Well, you know, they say once you get a little bit of the island, it stays with you forever. <laughs> and you've lost your Scottish accent. A much a much improved uh, iteration of Steve Lewis, I might add. I, well, we kid, ladies and gentlemen. Obviously, the great gift of rugby. G- gift... Hey, Baylou, uh, welcome. Finally. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm glad to finally have an opportunity to be able to be on here. You know, after seeing so many shows and getting a little jealous of not being able to be on, I was like, look, no, now is now. It's 2020, new decade, first guest of the decade. Boom. Boom. <laughs> Boom. Hindsight is 2020. Remember that? Hey! <laughs> Just writes itself, folks. This is a Major League Rugby show. We no. have season three. Yeah. A gift, if you will. The trio. Season three. The trio. I, I love to see that we have an, another sequel to the sequel, and I, I think this is going to be a great season because the last two, we have seen such a development on the field, and that is something that we can hold hand and then <laughs> signings for days. What? Yeah. Yo, this MLR is trying to do something real, and uh, I definitely am loving it. Yeah, and, you know, for the folks that lived in a, in, in a cave or under a rock, uh, last season was season two. We had seven teams initially. We had nine last year. The two teams that came in were Toronto and New York. They both made the playoffs. Right. Right. Big. That's big stuff. Look. The, after, to, after starting, Toronto, eight games on the road. New York, six of eight on the road. And look, and look, that's why I go back again to it says so much about how much we're seeing on the field. Teams are coming in. You guys have... So much talent that you've been able to recruit and sign in. And then to, on top of that. When you say able, you guys, do you mean? I'm talking about New York. Oh, hey, about, I, I am not. I, <laughs> all right, I'm a little bit of a, as, I'm a as, homer. As, no. as, as a, a gold fan, I'm going to have to, you know, separate myself as you guys kind of impacted our uh, playoff run. So I'm going to have to say you guys out of uh, uh, posterity for my people. And we're <laughs> inherently ready for some more Major League Rugby action, including a special guest from the Utah Warriors right after this. beer because of the taste and my beer is Pabst Blue Ribbon it has the taste and the flavor what do you think's on the label I think there's a a naked woman riding on a unicorn jumping over fire oh that's good beer Hey, and we are back, Matt and Gift, on Rugby Wrap-Up in Midtown Manhattan. And we have a special guest calling in from the Utah Warriors, none other than Kimball Care. Kimball, welcome to the show at long last. It's It's been a long time, guys. It's good to uh, finally be on the show. Yeah, Gift, we decided we needed to give the Utah Warriors some love. I, I feel like, you know, though, when you come in with a name like the Warriors and the logo that amazing, you have to give proper love. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> Kimball, for the folks at home, tell them who you are. Kimball Care, CEO, General Manager of the Utah Warriors, one of the uh, the early founding teams of Major League Rugby, and uh, been in this rugby uh, masochist uh, addiction for you know 20, 25 years now. For going back to uh, my days at BYU, played there, coached there for uh, a little bit of time, won some national championships as a coach. Uh, very fortunate to have had a lot of those experiences. Very fortunate to have then been able to also. Uh, played with the U.S. Eagles for six or seven years, and uh, you know, just just kicking away at this rugby thing still. Yeah, gift. 
I don't know. I don't. I, I just. I, I don't know whether to hit. I want to hit him in the face with a bag of nickels because I'm so jealous that he just threw out there very casually. Yeah, I won a couple, some championships, and then I was on the Eagles for six or seven years. What's you know, smoke? What, 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 no big deal. Why not? <laughs> no, that, that's pretty cool, Kimball. That's a pretty good resume you got there. And now you're with the Warriors, and and we as we were saying just before the break, it's season three. So it's as Gift said, the sequel to the sequel. So. Not necessarily the greatest start in, in the first two seasons. 17 losses and just five wins, if I'm not mistaken. But what people may not remember is that in that first season, you guys regrouped and actually got in the playoffs. You know, Rome wasn't built in the day, as they say, right? So um, for us, we've, we've never changed our goal of becoming an epicenter of rugby for North America. That includes facilities, that includes player development, that includes coaching development, community outreach, fan engagement, you know, anything and everything. And that takes time to build. You know, we've had to learn a lot of hard lessons, and uh, especially last season uh, was, was a big one, of course. But, you know, we're getting there. And I feel really excited about where we're at this year with the new staff, the players, uh, I mean, it's just uh, it's a great vibe right now. So we're, we're really looking forward to 2020. If I'm not mistaken, there's a, a synergy now with the San Diego Legion in terms of some uh, some ownership issues. There is that is that accurate? There there is. I mean, there, there's there, there's a partnership to to you know to some degree, and I, I think that's really up to you know to them on how they want to communicate and share that. But I mean, at the end of the day. I, I really think that uh, cooperation is probably the better way to put it is, uh, y- y- you know, it, it, it typifies this partnership of all the owners of this league in order to make sure that each team has its full chance to be successful at the level that they probably could be and should be. Um, and, and that's, you know, typical of, of really what Ryan and Darren at, with the San Diego group have been able to do. Uh, along with you know our other owners here in Utah, so it's um, it's all about creating synergies. It's all about creating other opportunities and making sure that this league is as robust and as strong as it can be and where it needs to be. What are the exciting things that you're looking for if you're a Utah Warriors fan right now? Coach Chris Latham. Well, this head coach is dynamite. He's as great of a coach as he was a player, um, and, and I think that's no small statement. Obviously. Um, he is just in the short time that he's been here is as impressive in how energetic, how focused, how determined he is to be successful. Um, you know, the players just lap up every single word that uh, comes out of his mouth. The coaches respect him and get along with him very well. The other assistant coaches um, and this community is going to just love him, you know, so. Uh, we're, I, I'm really excited uh, to have him in the mix, and we're very grateful for, you know, he and his family taking the uh, a little bit of risk to come all the way over from Australia, and to come to, uh, you know, he's going from 40 degrees Celsius down in in Australia to uh, 40 degrees Fahrenheit, and you know, you do the math; it's really not that that nice a, a, of a direction temperature wise. But um, we're, we're just grateful to have him here. So fans should be really excited about having Chris Latham here. Yeah, and you know, you, you mentioned Australia, and I think it's important that we all take a moment to acknowledge what's going on down there with our friends, uh, our brothers and sisters in, in rugby and beyond down in Australia. And our thoughts go out to them. Gift, there's a big rugby community in that Utah, that state of Utah that they got going on there. A lot of Polynesian, a lot of tough, tough rugby players. Right. It makes them exciting to watch. You know, I think that one of the things that has been uh, dynamic is being able to use a lot, not just the local community, but how much of the, um, whether Polynesian or Australian, just the excitement that comes within that community, Samoans, Fijians, Tongans that are there. It's, it's, um, it's ridiculous. And we've seen it, whether it's in uh, actual national games or whether it's been an opportunity to be able to see them in these MLR games, or even if we've seen them just playing on clubs, like nicest people in the world, scariest people to ever play against, yeah. but the most loving, embracing people to ever uh, just like root and spectate with. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys. I'm glad to see that you survived. You're in year three. It's just uh, onward and upward. And, you know, again, out of two seasons, you guys had a play. You were a playoff team out of one of them. So, you know, maybe last year wasn't the greatest year, but there are definitely positives coming out of that 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 teams like in that camp. 
Well, and, and you go back and you look at some of the numbers and the stats of, of, of this team. Yeah, we were weak in some of the set piece. And, um, you know, we probably didn't manage our players as well as we should have on, on, on substitution selections, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, there's some positive, you know, notes there in terms of the attack with the ball in hand. I mean, I think we were one of the teams that had the highest uh, number of minutes of ball in play. And, you know, there's, there's some dynamic um, efficiency numbers as well, you know, in terms of the amount of scoring opportunities that we did get inside the 22, et cetera. So, you know, we, we haven't really overhauled too much of this group. Uh, we brought in some key pieces to add some more depth, so we're not having to use players, you know, for exhaustive minutes like we, we did last year. And, you know, we brought in some, some other coaches that we believe can really tighten down some of those areas that we think we need to improve on. But more importantly, the, the biggest thing that, that I'm, I'm optimistic about is this coaching staff is going to be able to build the type of winning and confident culture um, that we may have lacked last season. All right, well, we're looking forward to it and maybe looking forward to you dusting off the cleats and getting back out there with them. Maybe that, that might get some fannies <laughs> in the seats too, but you don't have that problem. you got people coming to your matches. Gift, fine, yeah. uh, Gift, you're going to get out there and fix the set piece for them? You know, look, I, I, I've already played against uh, enough uh, Fijian Songans and all that. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm here to good spectate and I, I I'm look for a, a great competition, great show, and I, I already know Utah's really good for it. Uh, but on that note, we got to take a break. Uh, Thank you, Kimball, for coming on, and best of luck with the team going forward. Great. Thanks, guys. Appreciate your time. If you're in New York City and want to watch some great rugby, have some great food, and some great times, go to the world's best rugby pub, The Pig and Whistle, on West 36th Street. Hey, everybody. Matt McCarthy and Gift Abelu here in the uh, studio, and we have uh, a special guest on the horn continuing our theme of the Western Conference in Major League Rugby, none other than Dan Power. Dan, welcome. Matt, appreciate you having me on the show. Uh, Long-time fan, first time calling in. Gift, good to see you too, my friend. How are things out there in uh, New York? <laughs> They're going well. They're going well. It's nice to be out here for a little time being, man. So I always appreciate always seeing and uh, being able to talk with you a bit, my friend. Yeah, so Dan, just, uh, just, just to clarify for the folks at home, it's the first time that you might be on the show, but we've only asked you about a thousand times to come on. But, you know, you got your, you got your MLR kickoff, you're bouncing around doing games all over the world. You're a little busy. Yeah, a lot of people know Pete Steinberg keeps me under lock and key. Um, it's a pretty abusive relationship, but I uh, appreciate you bringing it up, mate, and hopefully I can get out of it in the next couple of years. But uh, it is good to be on the show. The, still the number one rugby show in America, right? We're, we're trying to catch you, but not making out much ground. That's all right. Well, you know, you two, you two English guys keep cracking at it. Well done. Well done. <laughs> all right. You, sir are an ex- expert in all things Major League Rugby, but specifically you know a lot about the Western Conference more than I do. So why don't you walk us through what we can expect? Well, it's really the easy conference to look at, isn't it? Because consistency is key there. Every team coming in, we've already had a good look at. The uh, Eastern Conference much more difficult with three expansion teams joining two expansion teams from last year. So um, rule of thumb a little easier on the West. Uh, the big question marks are going to be, obviously, the two rebranded teams for 2020, Austin Hurd, who had a rough 2019. How do they bounce back? Uh, Brett Simmons joins them as a head coach. So he will create some stability there, hopefully, and, and help turn things around. They've got a couple of great signings. Uh, Frank Halai, former All Black 15s and 7s guy, played for Auckland Blues and the Wasps. I believe, good finisher on the wing, and Roland Sunula rejoins the herd after a year in Seattle. Two good signings there. And for the Raptors, another coaching change where Dave Williams uh, is thanked and moved on and Pete Ballace comes in. They've signed some big players too, Dick Bioni and Rennie Ranger, probably the big ones. Most rugby fans will be pretty familiar with those names. Finishers, they'll probably end up fullback or on either flank there, running down Infinity Park this year. Moving down, you got the Sabercats, who we saw finished incredibly well in 2019 under Paul Emmerich. So Paul stays with the club. He will be, uh, I believe, doing some of the skills work and backs work. So good to see uh, Paul Emmerich stick around down there. Paul Healy, 
joins them from Australia. A pretty uh, impressive coaching resume for Mr. Healy and uh, some of their signings. Taylor Howden was actually an interesting one. Gift, he comes from your uh, hometown down there in New Orleans, did great things uh, with the Nola Gold and in, in building that culture with Nate Osborne down there. So a really good culture signing for the Sabercats in Taylor. Uh, I think and you know, he's some really good stuff off the field. He, he's he's in that same category as Roland Sunior. They just seem to get better. They age like fine nice. wine, right? Those two guys, are you know, they're not that old, but they've been around forever. It's also how you see them whenever they play on the field. The longer the game goes, the more powerful they get. It's, yeah. it's wild. Yeah, and, and you know, uh, maybe we'll get one of those uh, Just for Men commercials for Taylor to just get rid of that gray. Hey, man, Taylor, you get no gray with that. You get no play with that gray. Hey, you know, George Clooney seems to be doing okay with it, so I'm actually trying to get a little myself, maybe a little through the old, uh, the old beard here one day. Or maybe I'll just go for Matt McCarthy and just <laughs> deal with it like a man and shave it what all off. What are you off. saying? What do you, what do you mean? Just... What do you say? I'm not bald. I'm not bald. <laughs> No. <laughs> All right. Okay. Just, we let, let's get out of the the. And by the way, we got the Irish George Clooney uh, in in Greg McWilliams of Rugby United New York. He's we got an interview with him coming up later on the show. So we got that covered. You talk to Kimball, so we we know what happening at Utah. Obviously, the Chris Latham thing there will be uh, great to watch. Someone with a real high caliber name. Where I'm from in Australia, you know, I remember watching Latham as a kid. Uh, carve up for the Wallabies. So it'd be kind of cool to get a chance to meet him as the year goes on and, and see what he can do with Utah. But the big ones in the West, Matt, uh, last year's finalists. So Seattle, back-to-back champs, and then San Diego, um, probably the form team of 2019, and they've gone out and you know, picked up Mark Nonu. So just a small signing there. Another one to watch would be Chris Eaves as well. They lose Patty Ryan, and he was pretty big with that yes. scrum. So Chris Eaves, uh, the Moldy All Black player, He'll slot into that front row and see if he can, you know, help uh, alleviate some of the concerns they may have at the set piece with Paddy going. But one of your buddies goes to Seattle, Keith Lensing. I know you're a New York boy, and Keith was that Rooney. So, you know, it's always tough defending your crown. They did that. Now going for three. Yeah, three coaches Man, in three years, tough. right? Yeah, yeah. I think I think you're right. I think maybe four because yeah, I think one be didn't show yeah. up at all. <laughs> so. You talked about uh, Greg McWilliams. They, they signed a really good-looking uh, rooster. Sorry for James Kennedy for stealing the rooster name there. But uh, Juan Manuel Le Guzimont, yeah. JML, as I'll call him to save myself stumbling over that this year. Uh, I don't know if you've seen him, but he is uh, he's a handsome man, and I'm looking forward to seeing him play for Seattle as well. So who's going to win the whole thing there, Dano? Is it a three-peat? I really think Houston – were primed under what Paul did last year and then getting Paul Healy, a couple of good signings. I think they could be in and around. I think Seattle and San Diego, uh, unless something catastrophic happens injury-wise or form-wise, they would be my locks at one and two, and, and it'll flip-flop you know, where they stand. Outside of that, I, I think Houston, uh, a chance, Colorado, is a chance. You know, I think Utah and Austin are probably 12 months away. Uh, hopefully 12 months with the coaching staff in place, the recruiting process in place, they can start building towards it. But I really feel Seattle, San Diego, one of those two will come out of the West. So, Dan, we are basically out of time, but where can folks see your goods? I should be back, uh, MLR. It's going to be an exciting year. We've uh, already announced that CBS are back as partners again, which is exciting for the league and for the viewers. Um you heard some whisperings of some new television partners, and those will be announced in due time. So I'm sure it'll be in and around. Uh, yeah, un- Uncle Uncle Rudolph uh, Rupert <laughs> might be involved. So just keep tuned in and uh, come say hi. I'm looking forward to coming back out to New York and catching up with you too, Matt. And, of course, you have that podcast with Pete Steinberg, which is excellent. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Pete carries the show, and uh, I just cracked the jokes. It's worked out really well. So, no, we've enjoyed it, and I uh, have to return the favor. We're going to have to have Matt McCarthy on the show now and return the favor for you having me on uh, on your show. Certainly appreciate you and uh, give, giving me the time today. You got it, my friend. On that note, we're going to take a quick break, but we'll be right back with more Major League Rugby after this. If you're in New York City and want to watch some great rugby, have some great food, and some great times, go to the world's best rugby pub, the Pig and Wine.
hard. They yeah. they they're like, yo, you why are you forgetting us? Why why are you leaving us out of this now? Yeah, and and ladies and gentlemen, uh, truth be known, we have a gift from what would have been the Western Conference, but Nola is in the Eastern Conference because of whatever. We don't care why. And I'm going to have to ask a gift because you're wearing a, a New England Free Jack scarf and you are admittedly a homer for the, the NOLA gold. But we'll get to that in a second. First, we have an interview that I did this week at the Rugby United New York training facility at Wagner College with head coach Greg McWilliams. Check this out. So it took an easy subway ride down to the Staten Island Ferry, which is always free and takes you past spectacular views that you can never get tired of. And then a 10-minute van ride, also free, here to Wagner College to catch up with the Irish George Clooney, Greg McWilliams, the new head coach of Rugby United New York. Coach, big doings for you guys in the offseason leading up to now. You're one of the new faces, which includes French superstar Matthew Bestereau, one heck of a new assistant coach in Marty Veal, and you've got this new training location at Wagner and new living arrangements for players in a big house here on Staten Island. That's a lot of new. How's it all working out? Uh, it's great. It's exciting, I think, at this stage for every team. You know, there's nine new uh, head coaches, there's new kit, there's new facilities, so I think every team has a good energy at the moment. I think the key thing is to try and somehow manage to keep that going throughout the season. Uh, obviously, Marty's come on board. We've got Simon Gillespie as our team manager. We've got Ian Jones, a new S&C coach. We have two other um, intern S&C coaches with him, Michael Cullen being one from Lindenwood. Um, you know, and obviously we've got a medical team that have been here from last year. So it's just about trying to get used to each other and try and quickly get together to make sure that uh, we're producing some good stuff on the training field to improve our players. You got some missing pieces as per visas and players traveling, and it's pretty quick turnaround before the season kicks off in anger in just weeks. How's that impact decision making and how you go about training? Yeah, it's hard. Uh, I think every team is in the same boat. Uh, you know, our first game is on the 9th of February, so you know we have from now a month. So did a little bit of work pre-Christmas, and the guys have uh, have started off this new year pretty well. And obviously, we've got players who are still to come in. You know, guys who have just completed their uh, visa applications and just got the go-ahead. So uh, we've got guys who meet us this week, and then we've got a whole host of guys who come early next week. And uh, at the moment, it's about doing a lot of work with them remotely. Uh, just to make sure that they're, they know what they're doing when they arrive here because it's not a huge amount of time. Your rugby resume includes the vaunted St. Mary's School in Dublin, head of Yale Rugby, and now Team USA's attack coach for Gary Gold with a Rugby World Cup under your belt. How does that help? A lot. I think, um, you know, I, I think every coach will tell you they'd love to go back and do things slightly differently. Um, I thought we all learned a lot about... Um, I suppose about the game for me about the attack and, and where it needed to get to to be more competitive but I mean just to be there with the USA team and to represent USA on the world stage was uh, something that obviously I'm very proud of to be involved with with a really good management team and you know thank, thankfully we all got on so well together uh, so it made a lot of fun and uh, it's over now. And you have familiar faces here with you from that Rugby World Cup team. Yeah obviously uh, we have Nate Brakeley and Dylan Fawcett who are with us uh, they're they're you know they're pillars of our squad here, so um, they're two great guys, and you know I just uh, look forward to seeing what they can do with the team as leaders. Yeah, I noticed Nate was showing some of the guys how to use that curve rating gadget after practice. Oh yeah, I, Nate will probably show me a lot of things as well. Very smart guy. So uh, it, it, look, Nate is an incredible individual to have in your squad. We're very lucky. So uh, we'll use his brains as often as he can to make sure we become better. You got some superstars on the team. The aforementioned Matthew Bestereau joins returning star Ben Foden. They are in transit as we speak, but those are some pretty good reinforcements to add to an already impressive group. Yeah, I think if you look across the board, every team is going to be better this year than last year. Uh, the signings have been great. Um, you know, players who played last year for their respective teams are going to be better players this year. They know what to expect now. So I think you're going to see the competition being a lot stiffer. And uh, those players will add a lot of experience that we need as we try to improve our intellect around the game. And, uh, you know, they'll bring a good energy. So I think they're just as excited to get here as we are to have them. Okay, cliche question 101. Looking at yourself from above, what is the Greg McWilliams stamp on a team? No, I have no idea. 
I really don't. Uh, it varies an awful lot. I, I, I think you, you obviously hope that players enjoy the environment, that they feel they can contribute and that they feel that uh, they're able to express themselves. I think that's what most coaches would tell you. Unfortunately, you also need to win, which requires uh, other elements that I have other people around me to, to do. I mean, you know, I look at Marty Veal as a perfect case in point. It's, it's certainly not my stamp on this team. We've got a lot of people who are making a big impact and at the moment Marty Veal is making a massive impact and I think this whole experience wouldn't be the same at the moment without him. So, um, yeah, we've got a lot of work to do and we just want to just keep working. Good stuff. How about the biggest challenges you'll be facing this season? Uh, getting a good place to get coffee on Staten Island is, is pretty tough. Uh, look, I, I, I think obviously going away early on, having a lot of away games is tough. Um, and you want to get cohesion in your squad and it's very difficult to do that um, particularly when you have a short run in so it's just about trying to remain consistent uh, and try to hold on to good momentum when we get it um, long year long lots of games so I, it's hard to predict what's happening we just got to worry about ourselves and just try and make sure that we can be competitive come first game and hope for the best and you do know a New York team must beat a team from Boston aka Josh Smith's Free Jacks so everyone keeps telling me that'll be a gr I tell you they're going to be coming hot so um, obviously it's going to be a very uh, intense tough first game and, and we'll see how it goes thank you coach and good luck on the season Matt thank you so much you're great and that is the first drop the mic and exit frame ending of Major League Rugby 2020 hard to believe but this is head coach Greg McWilliams house part of his deal pretty nice all right, that was that was pretty cool, right? Nice facility. No, it looked good. It looked good. I have a lot of high hopes for them. Yeah. All right. So you you also we alluded to that rivalry between New York and Boston, which is an important one. And I ne I see that you're a Nola Gold guy wearing the New England Free Jack scarf. See, you know, sometimes sometimes you got to make sacrifices for the greater good. And uh, once again, as I uh, spoke on earlier, uh, as the Nola Gold lost our entitled playoff spot. Because of some New York people, I feel like, you know, sometimes you just have to take the time to recognize those who need to take them down. Oh, all right. Oh, Rectification ooh. will be here. <laughs> hey, Rectification. Another phrase for 2020 from Gift. Let's look at the other teams. We've got three new teams and they're all yes. in this Eastern Conference now. But yeah, no, I, I think there's a lot. There's a lot that I'm excited for on this side, especially coming with this Atlanta side particularly from this Atlanta side and you know I, I like what's happening with the free decks but I think we see something that's not just from a team side but we have a cultural element that comes into it with it and that too I like the fact of New Orleans having the chance to beat Atlanta on another level yeah that's so, another that's another rivalry that's a good thing exactly and then of course from this DC side I think we're going to be able to see a lot of, they've been building up um, impressively. I'm talking about in terms of social media, in terms of... Well, they got the beast. I'm, again, you know, you when you're coming in strong, when you're coming in new into a league, I think it makes a big difference to make a big pop. And if you're making a big pop, it makes something that is recognizable. I, I have a lot of high hopes for what you guys, what can be done afterwards. So I look forward to seeing what DC can do and be able to show um, more so of what they can do on the field, but really what they can do for their community and how it will attach him because DC and the beast and everything he wants to do. Oh, I, I'm here for it, for that area. Who's coming out of the East? <laughs> you got three teams, right? So yeah. you got, well, you got, so look, you got I think number one, I think new Orleans is going to make a real a comeback. I think them getting a new stadium is going to be such an invigoration for that team. But then the other team, I think is going to come out. I think we're going to get another Toronto look again. And strong uh, team. Yeah. Uh, it, it's hard to not see them coming back. They yeah. strong team last year, definitely coming, bringing back, I've heard a lot of good things with what's happening with the Free Jacks, but I do got to give it to you guys in New York. New York is going to be able to make another push in there, and I think especially coming off the power from last year, I, I do see them having a little, a little bit more energy. Now, I don't know if they're going to be two or three, but I do think that they'll be there after, you know, the right. gold. If doesn't know what he's talking about, ladies and gentlemen, New York, the, the Rugby United New York Roosters are going to win this year's Shield. And on behalf of Gift, I'm Matt McCarthy for Rugby Wrap-Up in Midtown Manhattan, signing up.